Today's presentation is about uh, how to increase your visibility and position yourself online. Uh, I had from Lola received your questions uh, before. Um, so I put those uh, in mind um, making the presentation. Uh, and also, most of the time when I give workshops, I really like to interact with you guys uh, and not just only talk because online visibility is such a broad uh, subject. So it will be on how to reach media, how to find media, but also how to present yourself on your websites and social media. And well, everything, uh, there's so much, um, much possibilities. Uh, and that is also what I received from you guys. Um, so I do uh, have made um, a storyline, a, a, a red line through the presentation, but also with little assignments in it. So we can have a little interaction between. Um, let's start. Let me see. Um, so today, um, well, I just said there's a combination of inspiration from other artists, um, a little bit more about the media and the social media landscape and how to um, make your own strategy for yourself um, that will work for you. Uh, and also finishing with how to increase your reach um, via um, advertising. And these are the wolves. As you can see in the communication uh, sector, there are many women working and just not <laughs> as many men. But uh, uh, I think he, uh, he really likes it with, uh, with all his um, with women around him. So he, I, I never hear him co complain. Uh, we are a PR and communication agency in Amsterdam. Um, and we tell stories of many different companies artists, um, musea, culture sector. So for me, the biggest part of my work uh, consists of um, helping organization and artists in the cultural sector. Um, one of my clients is Museum Plein Limburg. It's an, um, uh, there are three musea in the south of Limburg. Um, and we help them with everything about their expositions, but also storytelling, how to present themselves online as well. Um, and ICTO, uh, that's the month of the amateur arts. Uh, it's just finishing right now, it's always in June. Um, and for this year it was a really special year because every year we want to organize, um, do you hear me uh, good? If, if the sounds around me is too loud, just say it and I will think uh, of some opportunities. Um, but ICTONE is about um, finding uh, new ways to be creative at home, but also uh, finding new hobbies um, to do in your, in your spare time um, and make people more enthusiastic about creative activities. But this year it was really hard for people sending out on the streets, uh, going to events. So we had to make up something else. Um, and this year we did a um, cooperation with Thijs Boontjes. Uh, he's a um, musician from the Netherlands. Uh, and with him, we organized the biggest dance and show uh, orchestra from the Netherlands um, via Zoom as well. Um, and the initiative was so good uh, received from media, but also people that even the National Opera in Amsterdam uh, was joining our, our PR stunt. Uh, so we could, um, we were able to did the orchestra live Zoom session from out of uh, the Concertgebouw in Amsterdam. So it was really, really cool to see how uh, media and other uh, companies around us are seeing opportunities just right now um, in how creativity is more important than ever. So that's my first message to you, work your opportunity <laughs> right now because um, we see it all over. I will repeat it during the presentation. Um, I see media and, and others are really keen to 
to be more uh, creative, uh, especially right now. So that's the first thing. Um, I have received uh, your question. So this is, I think well, I will skip this one as well. Um, and at first, my question at you guys, what are your experience with media? Do you already have um, contact with media before? Were there television programs or, or journalists who were interested or do you have bad experience with journalists? I'm really curious to, to it. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, maybe, uh, I don't know. Mm, we usually, um, people are uh, more, mm, well, if someone wants to uh, share their experience uh, or, uh, or answer to this question, feel free to unmute yourself and mm, react to this. Otherwise, you can... Uh, the, via the chat is also an opportunity, of course. Also, yeah. Yeah, I've got some experiences. Um, I'm working for um, a music venue myself. Yeah. Um, and like traditionally we use um, like traditional press releases to uh, come in contact with the media, but um, I feel like that's getting less and less important um, either like in, in, the, in the music field, like the, the traditional Press releases aren't really important anymore. I I get the feeling more often. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's more about also more creative uh, ways of communicating with your audience and with uh, with the press. Uh, on the other on the other hand, um, local media are really really uh, interested in like personal contact yeah. with us yeah um, so so that's a bit of a difference i um experience yeah so if i hear you correct you say uh overall you ex you experience that um press releases are less um needed than before uh mm -hmm. for uh, for publicity but on the other hand um and and more uh, they're more keen on your personal story or anything they see and find online of you. Yeah, and on exactly. the other hand, for the regional media, they do are interested in, uh, in the stories you, you tell them themselves. Yeah, but, but not by press releases, but by more creative ways of telling the story. Yeah, and can you um, give an example for so, such a um, creative way? Um, well, for example, um, this month uh, we are celebrating our 10th uh, anniversary mm -hmm. um, and we did send a press release about that. Um, but it's like, I, I don't think they thought that was a really interesting story. But when we, um, when we told through our own um, like social media and website that we are celebrating it with uh, by releasing uh, a final record. Yeah. Uh, then that's some like that's a more interesting story, I guess. And then all of the media are covering the story that we are celebrating our tenth anniversary. Yeah. So by um, using like this vinyl record, uh, um, like to give ourselves a present in a way. Yeah. Um, uh, the media tends to find it a more interesting st story than the story itself that we are celebrating our anniversary. Yeah, it's really interesting you, you say it like this because that's the, um, always the, the, the struggle in uh, making your press releases. So what's the story? Is it the story you mm -hmm. think you have? Or is it something else you you self um, you don't think it is a story, but journalists will see it differently. That's um, really interesting you say it like this. And I see um, Anna. You say you are um, doing the PR, uh, but also are uh, are a journalist. How do you experience from the other side? Um, wait, let me. 
Can you see me? No. No, I think. Yeah, now I do. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, well, I think it's it's a benefit that I know both sides sometimes. Um, and sometimes it isn't because it's also frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> That, that I know, like, when I'm in a PR position, that sometimes I get a little bit, like, skeptical because I know, like, um, because I want to be, like, very um, enthusiastic, like, thinking, oh, great, we can get this in the media. But I also know from the journalist side that you're, uh, as a journalist, you're very, like, critical and it has to be, like, very relevant. And, yeah. and you think, like, from the PR side, you're also always thinking, like, oh, this is the greatest thing ever. That I have in my hands, yeah. That I want the world to know about, but then, um, yeah, you have to be very critical. So yeah, yeah. And from a journalist uh, side, what uh, for you what means critical? So what are your um, talking points when you say something must be relevant? Um, yeah, that is. Uh, it has like something new to it or it's relevant for like bigger group of people not in some way at least mm -hmm. and not only um not only some niche that you happen to be in maybe but that you maybe it's a niche niche uh, subject but you can like extend it to a bigger uh, audience in some yeah. way and so that's it's also like, the way you present it yeah so i think like it well it's also when i pitch like journalistic stories that sometimes it's just a little very small like niche thing that interests me but then i i feel like somewhere i really want and need to write about this and then then i keep searching for like um perspectives that would make it interesting for more people yeah yeah and i'm really glad you say it because this is always the something you have to keep in mind um when you are in contact with others because i can imagine that your work sounds really logical for you uh even the stories you, you tell your yourself um most of the time you have the story or the, the this idea for a long time or it's something creative and you want to to be uh, in an experience but it's always um to make it a little bit less sexy but you always have to think of your grandmother who don't understand anything of what you do uh, how would you explain your work to her um and keep that in mind when you are talking with uh, journalists or um sending your story because everyone uh needs to understand what your work is about um uh, only for for them to to make their own uh, experience with your work um thank you guys for for this input um that was let me see if i can um there was a little bridge to i have three um artists who um, were the last couple of months in the media with their stories. Um, and I think to, there's another question, but I will <laughs> will go through it myself. Uh, this is a young filmmaker from uh, Amsterdam who um, made his first Hollywood film uh, in America. Uh, and this is a really interesting story for the Netherlands part, of course, because it's a young filmmaker with not that much experience uh, so how did he make it to hollywood uh, with his first movie um, this is this is something they pick out of the news um, and tell the story about it um, then the next one is nina de la paga um, she is a theater maker um, and her story is, um, the story is that she has a new um, foreshtelling. Uh, I'm not sure how to say it, but, okay. uh, and, um, but the, the interesting part of her story is that it's really personal. 
so this what Witze just told us um, a couple of uh, m moments ago, that journalists are always really interested in the story behind the work you present. So it's not the story that you have a, a new presentation or a new collection um, launched on the 1st of July, um, really good for you, but what is the story uh, about your work? Why did you make it? Where did it go wrong? Did you struggle with anything? Um, are there some collaborations you work with who, which is really unexpected? Um, this is, uh, these are the stories that your journalists are interested about and that's uh, something they want to know. Of course, uh, the launch is uh, a moment you can pick for um, sending out the press release or sending out your message to uh, the journalist because they do have, it, there has, has to be a relevance for their readers. So everything you, you uh, share with journalists, always keep in mind that anything they, they write, they write for their readers. Um, so is there anything uh, which is relevant right now? Why should they uh, write it right now and not in a month or in uh, next year? Um, what is the personal touch? Why is it so important they have to write about you and not uh, your neighbor who is also making paintings? Um, so keep that in mind every time you want to reach uh, and want to get found by journalists. Um, and the last one, Thijs Bonches, as I mentioned before, uh, during, just before, no, it was, uh, was last year, um, the um, singer-songwriter made a, a new, his new music video, um, music clip in a Rijksmuseum, um, and only just this cooperation was such a, a fun story that journalists really wanted to write about. Um, and also another thing he did was a fun joke with um, a radio DJ uh, at 3FM. They made up a, a song um, from a, a more popular song of, um, how does it name? No, I'm sorry, I <laughs> lost the, the, the artist. But he did a remake of the song in Dutch um, for a Corona uh, version. Uh, and this song uh, got, uh, went viral. So these are also things you can, um, if you want, if there is a little silence in your own work, always look for opportunities. Is there something right now during uh, this COVID-19 period, is there something you can um, be creative in your work, uh, find cooperation with others or with uh, media? um for for new ways to to show you what you can do and um yeah show which we have in 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 home um so actually you already told it told it yourself um summarize when uh is there news value when it's relevant uh when it's interesting and why now these are the questions you have to um, ask yourself when you're reaching out to journalists. Um, I have a little assignment and I would really like you to um, think about this and then maybe in five minutes we can, um, or maybe earlier, I'm not sure how quick you are with assignment, but three or, or two persons who can um, yeah, say they're, they're um, the things they, they, they get up. Yes. Uh, the assignment is, what is your story? And could you pitch yourself in one minute, uh, thinking about um, who are you, what are you doing, uh, and why it's, why it's interesting for a journalist? It can be your own story, but it also can be something you do at the moment, a project you're working on. Um, be, uh, I'm a journalist right now and uh, I would like to, uh, to pitch, uh, to hear your pitches uh, for one minute.
And if there's any anybody who thinks I don't need five minutes, I will do it right away, then <laughs> it's also fine, of course. And I see your question, Jonna, as well. And um, this is something we will discuss um, um, in the next uh, present up in the next slides uh, about how to reach your um, reach audience that you don't know where to find. Is there already somebody who would like? to pitch their story in, in one minute. I see one. Uh, would you like to? Yeah, go ahead. I'm not sure if you can unmute yourself. So I'm a visual artist, photographer, and my main inspiration is uh, classical music. Yeah. And um, I create Gesamtkunstwerke with uh, musicians uh, and composers like Philip Laas and Mel van Raad um, to uh, envelop uh, the viewers of a concert in an immersive uh, environment of uh, images and, uh, and sound. And, um, well, my main theme is, is landscapes and um, I coordinated uh, the images like uh, like the seascape uh, with uh, with the minimal music to create a, a different experience. And where do you get your inspiration from? Well, fr from classical music mainly. So when I'm in a in a landscape, when I see a landscape, I hear music actually. So it it, it flows into each other. So and that's. And I try to um, mix those and, and match those uh, the best way. And, and um, within the, the the classical music, is there any are there any artists or in in particular you you get your experience from and why? Um, so I'm mainly inspired by contemporary classical music uh, from minimalists like Philip Glass, for example, but yeah. also. Um, um, some earlier ones like Debussy or Stravinsky um, and uh, very contemporary ones like Max Richter and yeah. Niels Fram. Yeah. Do you see how I'm uh, finding the, the, the more, I, I think you, you, the, the thing you said before that when you are standing in the, um, in the field you uh, hear the music already, that's mm -hmm. something that's really unique for you. Yeah. Um, so I would like to hear that one um, way more before in, in the story okay. uh, and find these kinds of little anecdotes um, that are really make your story um, for you um, because that's something journalists are really keen to hear. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Is there anybody else who would like to pitch their one minute story? I have to see if I can. Yeah, I would like to. Um, 
Let me see if I can find you. Where are you? Hi. Um, can you see me now? Uh, yeah, I do. Yep. Liam, hi. <laughs> Hi, yeah, that's actually my son's name. I'm working on his Zoom right ah, now. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm Thais Bonches. I'm not sure if I'm still Thais Bonches, but... <laughs> my name is Henny, um, and I'm a 51-year-old uh, woman who is in art school. And I went there because I had a lot of work experience in the social sector, and um, I wanted to do more with my visual talents. And what persuaded me was that they said that if you do this art school, then you are able to do social projects. And I, I, I can see that even though I'm trying to get there. But what I'm looking for is a way to, in, in a story, combine all the, the, the new skills that I'm building, um, the visual art skills with the old, the, my former work experience. I was, I worked at a government as a, as a policy worker, um, I coordinated uh, what they call here Breda School Community School. So, and I'm every time trying to struggle. Like, okay, how do I say it? I can say I'm a I'm a person who's creative in finding solutions. You know, uh, because I've done I can work either with my head and with my hands. But so I don't have a fixed story yet. But this is what I'm trying to look at. I like. Yeah. That, it's you know? always uh, it's also good that um, I think nobody's story is ever fixed. Um, so it's also the journey um, you're in right now, and mm -hmm. the story that you is it you started at fifty. Um, the, 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 did you start it just? No, now? I, I just I'm halfway. I will start my third yeah. year. In so only that one that you always worked uh, in something else and that, that you just start right now with the, um, uh, with the program and, and the study um, that you implemented in your work uh, as a social worker and uh, maybe also the things you learn by combining those two. This is what makes the story um, for you. Um, and also the journey you're in right now. Um, so that combined with anything, all of your learnings um, from now, uh, and maybe also, I'm not sure if you have an ambition with the, your um, study and if you have a, a little plan or, or a dream you want to, um, uh, to make with, with, uh, with not yet, but, I'm, I'm, but if that is what I want to do. We'll have a big internship in the, in the third year. Uh, and it will definitely be about a community practice or something. Yeah. That will clarify a bit more. I know I make my, my visual works are about women, women's bodies, and about sexuality. So that is my fascination. And, and yeah. what I'm trying to do mainly, I have an Instagram account long time. And what I'm trying to do is to share the things that I make, you know, the fact that we had another presentation, but you said the true thing, I just added a presentation and never thought of the fact that I should share the story behind it. Yeah. I have a presentation, everybody has a presentation, like my classmates too, I have to say why, you know, what is yeah. my yeah. story, so thanks for that. Yeah, it's always, um, I know I know. Apple will, will always say it. it's not about a product, but because it's just a telephone or or, or a, a computer, but all, it's always about why. Why did you uh, start this program? Why did you, it's that story that people will remind um, and will want to tell others. So make it appealing for, for the story you're telling. Um, it's always about storytelling. Um, so of course, you also want to know what it is, um, and maybe even the stories, how it's made. So everything is always about uh, a subject and um, the story behind it. Or um, yeah, thank yeah. you. And then, actually, uh, what you're saying is a really good opportunity for media because um, I can imagine that you think. Oh my lord, uh, there are so many uh, newspapers, so many journalists, um, even the, the big 
uh, newspaper, how will I ever get into there with all those other artists who also write the, those press releases and have new album um, uh, albums with the with, with which they launch um, and so many expositions? How will I ever get in there? Um, just the again, it's always about the story behind because even the the biggest uh, newspapers have some guidelines they they work with to make those uh, newspapers so they every day they have on monday they have the sports uh, section on tuesday they have a cultural section on wednesday they um, give attention to um, economics so every day they have a, a, a guideline for their content um, to be able to give news every day. But even in the cultural uh, section, there are guidelines for their stories. So one of those are, um, I have to switch the content because otherwise I don't see it. I know in um, Parole, there, there is a uh, section which called Mein Amsterdam. And every week, um, somebody from Amsterdam Will tell about their favorite pieces in the in the city, and now you can think, well, what should I do in this section? But when your inspiration is about the city you live in, or just like Johannes just told us, uh, when I'm uh, in some kind of spot, uh, I already hear the music for my new work. This is something really interesting for this uh, section because Janne van Gol every week needs a new story to tell. Um, and she is looking for, for new um, people who, um, who can tell their story um, every time. So find uh, the, the media that are interesting for you um, and look for the opportunities that there are such as Hart Hoogt, I'm not sure if everyone knows it, uh, but it's an um, online platform for uh, cultural makers. Um, and um, by following them on social media, um, I found this um, section which called a uh, Nieuwe Bildspraak. And every, let's see, is it every week? I'm not sure, but um, every time a new artist will share their um, visual story. Uh, and they even have uh, written in the comments that when you're interested in this section um, and you are a photographer, uh, you can contact them with, uh, with, um, with the journalists. So also journalists are always uh, searching for, for new um, opportunities to tell stories um, and when you are following the, um, the media that are interested for you um, you can be uh, updated about those opportunities. Maybe it's not for now but then write those journalists and those opportunities for another time that when you have a story you really want to tell then you have a little list and you can uh, look back if the, there's, those are still relevant for you at that moment. Um, next one. Yeah, the same thing is with uh, see all this and NSA. Oh no, oh, I've uh, made it out of the presentation. There's also NSA and see all this. They have now in COVID-19 period um, make extra uh, newsletters for um, sharing their um, their social their uh, cultural content, so they have extra uh, time and extra uh, space made up for the cultural section um, because there is so many interesting um, stuff right now, and they see the relevance for even now, especially now uh, of the um, cultural arts. Um, so use it. 
<laughs> it's a, it's a big opportunity, and it's always good. I'm not sure it's not not in this one, but in the last one, you always can see who has written it. So um, at the first one, it's Johanna van Goo. At the other one, is Peter van Brummelen. And when you're doubting if the journalist, if it's just a one-time thing or if it's uh, something the journalist write uh, about often, just Google the person. Um, and most of the time, journalists will be found in Journa. It's a platform where all their articles are published on. I have written it uh, in the presentation uh, also. Um, and on LinkedIn and Twitter, then most of the time they say um, they write about uh, the content they're interested in. So that's uh, also a way to find um, if it's a one-time thing the journalist wrote about or it's something you can uh, contact him, him or her in another way as well. Um, if it's working with, uh, I see some sound issues, but I hope that will be fixed. Yeah, they are fixed already. Yeah, ah, great. Um, Something I found really interesting is the opportunity some um, cultural uh, organization get in this period. So there is the um, Rotterdam Philharmonies uh, Orchest, Orchestra, who uh, couldn't be word able to get together in this period, but uh, instead of uh, they made a video um, with all them together. Um, and posted it online. And this screening, it was on 20, 21st of a April, uh, and this video uh, reached a higher number of visitors than they uh, anybody welcome in the concert halls. So it's really interesting. So on the other, on the first hand, they, they have no uh, visitors in, in the room because it wasn't able. But on the second hand, they have never before uh, had so many views um, and that's also the the thing the journalist in this um, article wrote about that um, makers found that this way of online presentation they never expected so many new uh, views and so many new um, audience to get to know um, the music because how many times you, you will find a, a 16 year old um, in, um, in, an, in an opera. Uh, but now because it's online uh, and I, they found it it's in a new uh, way presented it, um, it's more um, visible for them as well. And they can, it's a new easy way to get in touch with new kinds of, um, of audiences. So this really was a really interesting article I found about the effects also. Um, I will skip this one for now, but I really like you um, for uh, some kind of homework. Um, when you have a story to tell, first write the, the, the media you are hoping for, even your your dream media, the, the, the media you think you will never uh, be able to, always write all the, 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 the journalists and the media you would really like to be named in, um, even for national papers, but also radio, TV, magazines, um, and regional, because I saw it, Johannes, you already told it, Regional media is really important and really keen on uh, stories. Um, so please do uh, keep them in mind as well, uh, because sometimes it does seem they have no big reach, uh, but the readers are really um, interested in the in the stories um, that happen in the region, uh, even more than the people who will read the, the bigger papers. So, of course, it's amazing when you're uh, presented in the the Vehicle Dry Door, uh, but there's little, um, just, well, let's say, if 2% is, 
is interested in the story you have to tell, <laughs> then you you should be happy with it. Um, uh, and on the other hand, on the regional media, that's a way more bigger um, audience that is relevant for for you. Um, these are the tips uh, I just told some of them. So for me, I always start with Google. <laughs> <laughs> Google is your friend in many in many ways, but uh, also in finding journalists. It's, it sounds really easy. Uh, sometimes it is just as easy as it is. Um, Google. Uh, even try the the name and uh, uh, an email address. Sometimes you will find a journalist as well. Um, also on LinkedIn, some uh, journalists uh, will have their contacts there as well. Uh, or you can try to send them a personal message and um, don't hesitate just write a little just sh keep it short um uh, keep it uh, relevant so why are you thinking about this journalist why is especially this person and not somebody else um so do uh do some research um tell the story you want to tell uh, just in in one line or two Tell them what's about when it's uh, when it's uh, going to happen and why it's relevant for the person, um, and then you can send an invite and you will get some response or not. But you at least you tried. <laughs> um, <laughs> on the other hand, you have Blendel. Um, I think it's getting a little bit harder right now for Blend for using Blendel to find journalists. Uh, for me, until now, uh, it was a really fine, um, uh, easy way to, to look up articles um, besides Jorna uh, on, um, on find the right subjects uh, because you can type in um, classical music and um, select the last year, and then you see every journalist who wrote about classical music in that timeline. So there's a really easy way to, to look up um, in, in that way. And also always the, the media of the website of the media um, almost always have a, has a color form. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the same word in English, but um, what it's, uh, it's a list of journalists, sometimes with contact details as well, um on what subjects they are responsible um and what i do like about this part of the site is because there's also a general um Godoxy, uh email or an info at email and the last part is always the same so when you have found one journalist who's called zoe.dejong at ad.nl, you know the other one is also called first name dot last name at uh, the, the mailing.com. So in, in that way, when you find three or four uh, journalists with the same uh, email, uh, the same lineup for the email address, you can try it for the, the ones that are interested for you. Um, when you think, well, I have more for me that the magazines are more interesting, there's always a list in the magazines as well with journalists who um, wrote um, that edition. So it can vary per edition, but there's also a, a, a group of, work, of journalists who write them regu regularly. And of course, there are many freelance journalists um, who uh, for I, um, I've seen it for me as well. Tomorrow morning, I will organize a press um, breakfast, also online, um, and it's for uh, it's about Danish design. And I had to found a lifestyle journalist who will join the the press release uh, of press breakfast. And it was really hard to find the, the right journalist because when you, for me, uh, I had to Google on linda.com and on um, Vete Wone. And then for me, I typed in Danish design 
or interior design, then you find lots of articles. I I'll, I'll clicked on all of them, and then you see the, the journalist who, will, uh, who wrote them. Um, but when Googling the, those persons, I saw even it was a half, a half year ago, just a couple of months ago that this article has been written. Uh, they already left the magazine or they already had a new, um, a new assignment uh, any, 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 yeah, for another um, magazine. So sometimes it's really, it can be really hard for finding the, the right persons, but when you have them, um, keep them in mind, make a list, um, and always think about the journalists who already written about you, um, keep them in mind because they will be interesting, interested in your story the next time as well. Um, so don't forget about the people who already wrote about you. Um, we have written, um, the Wolf has written an, an article about how to make a good press release because we said, I know you're saying, uh, <laughs> I'm still, I see a little bit, being a little bit darker now, but um, I get what you're saying about it's not really sexy anymore to send out a press release. Um, and I do agree that it's uh, being less and less uh, effective. Uh, but when your press release or when your story is interesting for uh, a broader audience, uh, it can be handy even for yourself to write down your story uh, in a one pager, um, to have your pitch on paper, um, and to send out to uh, a broader media. But when you run um, media attention, you always have to make a list of uh, key media uh, who you will be contacting personally. Because journalists will get lots and lots of press releases every day. Um, and um, it's all about the, the topic and this, that's all the, those tips and, and what you will find in this, in this article. Um, but it's always also about the personal contact with the journalist. So don't expect when you when you think it, but I've sent out a press release to 200 people, so I will nobody <laughs> respond to me. Um, they get a lot of press releases and think about the, the, the follow-up. Uh, it's really important when you want uh, the attention. Even a little call, uh, just don't only say, hey, I've sent you a press release, did you receive it? Um, they probably said, yes, I did, I don't know, um, but send it out again. So do have your story uh, in line, but that's the press release you have before you. So um, I'm thinking to switching to another place because it's really, I'm a little bit dark right now. I've uh, put in a little pause. I'm <laughs> Break. I'm not sure how you guys are, but for me, uh, a little five minutes uh, break will be fine. Um, yeah, uh, people uh, are. Um, I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, we usually also uh, ask uh, participants how are they doing and if they would. Uh, let me check uh, the people. Are uh, people okay? Your people want to take a two minutes pause or. Uh, we carry on. You're okay? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, then right. the only thing I do is switch to the other side of the table, then you yeah. don't see a, a black spot anymore, but just the person. Perfect. Nice. Here we are again. We were talking about the list. Um, there is Miss Meg. Um, it is a free um, alternative for the, the press list and for smart PR. Um, I have to say that I haven't um, used it or looked it up uh, for um, a time now. So I'm not sure if it's still an option uh, and if it's still relevant. But you can try uh, that one because most of the time the, the platform where you can uh, look up for journalists 
with their context, there, there are um, paid uh, platforms. But I'm not sure, Lola, do, do you know any others maybe? Um, no, but I'm looking at the time and I think time-wise we should go to the next uh, topic. Yep. <laughs> Great. Social media. Um, I think it's a struggle of, of many, uh, including myself, because there is so many uh, different kinds of platforms uh, you can choose from. Um, and I have seen the question uh, from you many times, do you have to be uh, active on, on all of them? Um, for that one, uh, already, no, please. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it, there's no way you can be uh, active on, and relevant, most of that, on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and uh, TikTok and Twitter. Uh, you will be, um, it's a day, day job for um, being relevant on all, on all of them. So please um, find the, the platforms that will um, fit the best on your personality and your favorite uh, on how to connect and how to uh, interact with your um, audience and also um, the audience you want to reach. Um, because I will get to it uh, a little bit later, but because I know Facebook is in, and still the, the biggest platform in the Netherlands, um, based on the followers. Um, but keep in mind that Facebook is also the biggest platform because it's the most, uh, it has the longest, um, experience uh, but and most of them because i am active on facebook as well but active is a really uh um over uh um i i don't i do 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 not use facebook anymore so it seems that i am following all those um organizations but i don't do anything with it um there were instagram is a really growing uh, platform uh, with much more interaction um, and I think it's really even more relevant for you guys because it's really based on telling stories via images and videos um, and there is an option to tell your stories by the timeline but also by the stories which will be um, you can post every time every day you can post a story it will be vis visible for 24 hours and then uh, it disappears um, and that that's the thing people really like um, something that will be uh, away in a, in a few hours they want to see it um, so you you see that the stories uh, now are way more popular than the timeline uh, below. Um, people maybe when they have an hour on Instagram, they go through all the stories and then if they still haven't reached their limit on social media, then they will go through their timeline. Um, so please keep in mind that when you do post on Instagram or Facebook, um, use the stories as well. And don't forget about the stories because this, this is the way they will get true to your timeline. Um, also thinking about, uh, it's really interesting, some, somebody told me two years ago, but in, when introducing uh, Facebook is now also the owner of Instagram, which uh, has uh, made some differences in the um, algorithm. Um, and the, when you have a an, an professional profile, only the last, 50 contacts um, who had interaction with you will see you again in their uh, story line. Um, <laughs> so if you haven't posted anything in a week or two um, and your followers are really keen in liking anything and interacting with, you don't even have the chance uh, of being visible, visible or the, on the timeline. 
so that's why it's also really important to um, have a have a cont continuously um, posting on um, on your platforms, uh, and even that's why you can be visible on any platforms because it's just way too much work. So please choose your the most relevant platform for you because I know this is for Instagram, but it's also for Facebook and it will be for LinkedIn. Um, Twitter has a little bit another algorithm that's just it's going that quickly. So uh, all the last, the, the, the latest posts will be on top. But even there, there's an algorithm that um, posts that are more um, retweeted and have more likes will be on top as well. Um, so that's the first thing I want to say about uh, Instagram. It's really uh, nasty, I think, because um, it wants to behave like a human. Um, when you uh, post a video online, uh, the algorithm of Facebook and Instagram will look into if you click on the music, if you put out of the, the sound, if you will watch it uh, longer than a second or longer than five seconds. Um, anything you do with the video or with, um, with your interaction with video will make the video more or less popular. So when you put out the, the, the sound at, uh, on the video, uh, Instagram will think, oh, um, the people don't like this video, we'll make it a little bit more uh, or less um, seen in the, in the timeline. So these are all things you have to keep in mind uh, when posting on social media. Um, I have uh, some uh, artists uh, put in the, the presentation. Maybe if you have your cell phone with you, you can scroll through the, um, the person's um, uh, timeline. Uh, because this Mignon, I will do it myself because I'll, <laughs> I will have to go out to presentation again. Um, she is an artist um, and also she makes a podcast. Um, but the thing she does is she tells stories uh, via her social media platforms. So I will have to look up Mignon. Yes. She now has 15,000 uh, followers. No, I said, did I say it correctly? No, I didn't say it correctly. Um, and every day she tells um, stories via her, um, her Instagram stories about all kinds of topics, but that, that is relevant for her. So she says uh, she's an, um artist um and a person who yeah moral reader how do you say it in english <laughs> a person who uh who stands up for for human rights and um um uh, social discussions um and that's her her personality and so also when she she does make music she just make um, photographs, she just make uh, all kinds of different arts, but her story, it's, it's always um, something about social um, communities. Um, and that's the way she can present all her different kinds of arts uh, in one platform. Because I did receive uh, questions about that as well. Um, I'm doing lots of different things. I think, Vitsi, you, you know, that's one of your questions as well. How do I all combine those different things in one identity? Um, sometimes this is your possibility. So if there is a red line through all your um, artistic work, keep that in mind for um, your, yeah, your umbrella for, for everything you want to do. Hang on there. Um, if there isn't a, a red thread or a storyline combining all the different arts, uh, maybe that's a way then you do this, this uh, when you do things.
think the connection yeah. is... Uh, oh, yeah, there. Um, yeah, we lost you for a second, but you're back. That's good. Ah, okay. <laughs> and on the other hand, work that you're really uh, keen to and is really close to your heart. Um, choose which platform you want to use. I also can imagine when you do some teaching or um, uh, more uh, advisory, um, LinkedIn will be a good platform for, for that and your Instagram uh, account will be more interested for your um, your other work. So this is also a way you can use your different platforms for different kinds of work. There is a question, and I think this is something that uh, many of us uh, are also thinking about, which is uh, when you post something on Instagram and then you also share this on Facebook, what would you advise uh, or would you advise to do this or uh, is it a, a smart way of using the information or would you recommend to to create like within the same content different posts yeah um i think it's always good to um look to the opportunities of the media platform itself because i know from ictone um i advise them every year on how to do their social media and one thing i'm really happy with them they now use a planning tool um, for their different kinds of social media um, content and, and posts. But what they also do is um, post a an, an, an little portrait uh, of, a, of an amateur uh, artist uh, with the link uh, in the text uh, for more information, look here. But when you post it on Instagram, um, they have a little, uh, have a long, uh yeah uh url uh website link uh but they can click on it um so always look for um you can use the same text um you can put uh you can place the same content but do keep in mind how it will be presented on the the timeline um therefore Facebook, I can imagine, it's more interesting to, when you put in the link, you already get the article uh, with the picture placed with the article and a little subline with the title and the first two lines of the article. Then you can put in another um, uh, additive or another um, text for, for, for more information. So you can maybe um get a quote or um or get any anything else about about um about the article that is interesting for for the readers there where on social on instagram it's more about maybe three or four pictures um when you can just make a summarize of the article and say when you want to read about more about this please go to the link in the bio so yes you can um, share the same content but please keep in mind um, how to post it because for me i see it many times and um, i think it's um, not a waste but a lost opportunity for 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 um, a good way for presenting because um, i see it on instagram Lots of time, oh, I really am interested, but because of the link is on the text and I can click on it, I'm already gone and scrolling through the, to, to the next um, post. And uh, Johannes, um, uh, related to, to what you were saying, asked um, uh, which uh, social, me uh, social media planner would you recommend, uh, recommend for this? Yeah, I'm using Hootsuite um, and I'm really happy with it. The only thing um, that doesn't work good for it is Instagram, sadly, um, because um, you can plan for Instagram in Hootsuite uh, and then you will get a reminder for posting on the online. Um, but I did hear from my contact at Ictone that it is changed in the last couple of months. So I'm not sure if it's just a test running out or it's already changed. Um, but there are, in every planning tool, there are some uh, hooks that is never 
um, the same as when you're posting it yourself on the platform. But Hootsuite is a really good one um, to use. And in the end of this presentation, I also have another couple of tools um, listed. It. All right, thanks. Cool. Um, the next one is Anouk Kruithof. Um, and what I want to so show about her um, profile is that when you see it, it doesn't always have to be picture perfect. Um, so when you think your images are not good enough, yes, please keep in mind, use your own uh, pictures. Don't use uh, an unsplash or anything uh, else because it will be less um, interested, but I don't think in your kind of work that will be necessary. <laughs> um, but also think about uh, how it's made. So you see the third post with a uh, bathtub. Um, she is all about the story she tells with it. So I'm gonna put it on my telephone to tell the story. Anouk Kreiswolf. Uh, on this first, first picture, you see the bathtub on the balcony. Um, and she's saying, there are many ways to keep yourself busy during COVID-19. For me, since three months ago, I was busy trying hard to get up this antique giet eisige bed uh, Maybe it weighs about 300 kilos. My father and I hammered it out of the house in Antwerp just before Corona started to rule the world. world. And today, after many field attentions and being a waiting culture, I got up to my factory floor. Uh, where I live and work now. Uh, guess who gets the most beautiful bedroom palace ever? So it's a, a little personal story, but it's also relevant to her work. Um, and that's why um, I had some questions about combining personal stories and work-related stories. Um, yes, please do share your personal stories, but only when it's relevant to your work as well. So for me, um, when you have, have uh, five kids and three dogs and a chicken at home, really good for you. Um, but only <laughs> when the chicken is part of the of your work, or you um, only th then share um, the stories about them. Um, but yes, please do share your behind the scenes or your personal stories. You see, in the first picture, there's a bathtub on the balcony, then a small video on how they uh, wanted to, to get it up on the balcony, how it's wrapped up in, um, in protective paper, uh, and a really happy photo in the end. And there are no, there are no, not fine-tuned, there, there's a little, so, some pictures are even sharp, but it is fun to see. Um, and also interested, interesting in her stories is that she really uses many, many, many hashtags. Um, I don't uh, think you should overload in the, in the use of hashtags, um, but it will be helpful when you use some of them. So always think about when you have a, a new uh, launch, or a new um, album or anything that's personal to you with their own title, um, use that one as a hashtag so others uh, who will share um, will use this hashtag as well and you will find anything and anybody um, who shares your work with this hashtag. Uh, and on the other hand, there are hashtags that are more popular um, and there's a balance between good popular and too much. Uh, because there is something like food porn, not relevant for you, but uh, when you use the hashtag food porn, there are millions of people using this hashtag. So when you use that one, you will be able to get many likes probably, but there are likes from all over the world. Um, and just 
for the like. And maybe you will get some spam as well from, oh, really good um, chicken. Again, there's no chicken on the picture, but um, would you like to work with us? Um, I don't think you want that kind of attention. Uh, but do think about hashtags uh, such as, um, let me think, if, you, if it's about a new um, classical music, uh, look up for some artists uh, that, that you are inspired about or the, um, the, the more specific classical music that is uh, in your work. Um, even it's um, uh, and, and uh, when you are um, having your your lunch at um, a, a place in the neighborhood, make use that hashtag as well. So find a good combination of I would say uh, ten hashtags um, or less uh, for your posts. Uh, and I think you will see some results um, in the following and in the relevance because using these hashtags, people who won't follow you already will find them uh, via their uh, explore uh, section in their social media. Um, uh, Anna has a question related to this. Anna, would you like to, uh, I think it's a good moment uh, for you to, to ask about it before we carry on. Yes. Um, yeah, I was uh, actually wondering as well that uh, do you have any specific tips how to gain new followers on social media? And also, I was interested in like, uh, do you have any like funny or nice or uh, good examples of um, of people on social media that have uh, like for audience engagement, like uh, because like uh, when you like think of a plan, how other people can maybe share your post or like engage, so you yeah. like, get other people to expand your reach. Yeah, I do. Um, I have to see if this will work. Let me see. I have a link. Ah, damn it! Of course not. Uh, <laughs> I have a link below, uh, but I am seeing. It is linked. Uh, these are uh, um, behind this picture. There's an infographic um, with some. It does pop up sometimes. Can I do it when I? Uh, new screen. Sure. Do you see a website right now? Yes. Okay. Um, let me see. Accept. In this article, um, it's a really interesting article about um, facts and fig figures about Instagram. As you can see, there's more than a million uh, people using Instagram, um, which are the half, 500 million people are using daily basis. Um, and then here, there are 21 fashion, fascinating facts about Instagram. Um, especially for using professional accounts. As you can see, as I told you before, Instagram has 50, uh, 85, nay, 58 um, times more engagement per follower than Facebook. So yes, Facebook is still the biggest platform, um, but Instagram is way more popular. Uh, an average user spends 35 minutes on Instagram daily, so <laughs> that's a lot. Uh, and here, these are my favorite ones. Um, these are some tricks that will help you uh, gain more followers and find new followers um, by just posting your um, content in a specific, 
again, specific way, uh, such as when you post your story with um, an um, location tag, you will get to reach almost 80% higher engagement with your post uh, than when you don't use it. So think about when you have an, um, an exposition uh, at um, a big space, use, use uh, the location tag. Um, here it says you can use up to 30 tags per post, but nine is ideal. So I do agree uh, with that one. Um, also very interesting is that photos with faces receive uh, 80 of 38 percent more likes. Uh, I'm not sure if you have experienced itself uh, also, but I do experience it with all the posts I uh, I put on when you use your personal content when somebody's birthday, um, when you have your your own picture on it um, with your art it most of the time will be like more uh, that won't say that you always have um, to place content with your uh, face on it or anybody's face because I think a good uh, balance between um, the content is, is good. There are uh, people who have a social media content planner with only selfies but that's something <laughs> You, uh, uh, it's up to you if you if you're uh, done for if you would like it. Um, this is about the seven out of ten hashtags on Instagram are branded. That is uh, something I told earlier. So branded means it's uh, rel uh, related to your own um, organization or um, project. Um, and I also noticed that when you have a cooperation with um, with the project or within the story you're telling, please use the um, mentioning uh, option because anybody who is uh, relevant for the post will get an um, alert. Uh, and when they do get alerts, they most likely um, First, they will like it and maybe even repost it. Uh, it's the same thing I noticed with this workshop. Um, I totally forgot it. Uh, no, I don't, didn't forget the workshop, but I did forgot to, <laughs> to post it on my own social media channels. Um, and the last couple of days, uh, I've seen the social media posts uh, from out of the organization. I, I do, I have to repost them. So it, it really makes it for me easy to repost the story uh, that's already been there um, and in that way it's also easy for for you guys to uh, share your stories by your ambassadors or uh, contributors or anything anybody who is relevant for um, the story you want to tell via your social media channels um, and post with at least one hashtag will get 12% more engagement as well than without. Uh, there are a couple of uh, questions that I think we can address before seeing if we take a short break or if we uh, keep going. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I can't remember your name, sorry, but uh, Niam's mother, would you like to uh, ask them now? You, you wrote them in the chat, so. That's that's uh, fine. I'm just have to. See. I think you answered some of them already. Um, is it uh, smarter to do it in Dutch or English? Your hashtags. Is it, it you reach a far greater option? I think in English, far more people. But um, depending on the target group you want to reach. I understand. Um, and I thought there was some place where. You could find the most popular hashtags or something. Yeah, there is. Um, now I'm not sure. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't know it from uh, from out of my head. But there is um, when you open Instagram or Facebook, 
uh, and you type in the hashtag you would like to use, um, behind the hashtag there will stand um, how many times it is used already. I understand. So that's also a way to find out if it's uh, interesting for you to use it or, or not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, if you need to use the same hashtag every time, um, I do think when you have your own hashtag, please use it all the time. Uh, so every time you post anything and people will, um, will re repost it, they will see and recognize the hashtag. Uh, so it's more for the for the uh, recognition and um, the relevance of the the story, um, and for the other more popular hashtag, hashtags, uh, please keep in mind it must be relevant for that post, so that can be viable for for um, um, for post you want to 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 put online. But it might be a smart idea to. Let's say I have a presentation, I, I make a title for it, which is a special hashtag, and I use it every time. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, good idea, thanks. Yeah, so for, for these masterclasses, I can imagine there is a hashtag for the masterclass that will be used every time. Um, and uh, on the variety of the must on the, the content of the, the masterclass, you can vary in if you put in online visibility or um, social media, then then you can provide in the in the content of the of the masterclass or the the training you give. Yeah, I understand. Okay, thanks. Yeah, so I have uh, made a little list of the tips I I told already, but it's always good to make um, to uh, make a um, summarize them. Um, please post uh, regularly. Um, I can imagine three times a week is a lot. Um, so that's why I made it to one uh, times a week. Uh, I see, oh, no, it's good. Um, it's really necessary to be uh, on and continuously um, routine on posting just to be sure you will be seen um, by your followers. Else, when you haven't posted for a month, um, you have to um, first get your own followers back um, at you before you want to reach new followers. So um, it's a really good idea for, for at least keep your own followers um, be seen. Um, be active in the stories. Uh, with the stories, I mean the 24-hour um, the post on Instagram and Facebook. Um, like I said, it's a really good way to um, get new followers, even with the hashtag that does work as well in your stories. Um, so people who um, follow the, uh, some of the hashtag, they will find you also the same with the mentioning tag. Um, use uh, your own, preferably your own pictures, your own content. Um, it is the, the best and the most relevant for, for you. Um, not only share your, it's a little bit strange that I say it, uh, <laughs> um, back, back now, but uh, please also share uh, content of uh, others and with that I mean um, other artists that are relevant for you or um, you um, want to co uh, to work with them because by sharing uh, people in your field uh, by sharing their posts their followers will see it also and even maybe they will share your post again so that's um, a way to contact um, New, new, new persons for collaborations and for, for more visibility. Um, seek interaction. That's a really important one because um, I do think uh, many people use social media for work only by sending out um, your own um, content, but it's more relevant than when you there's something that when you post. Um, 
a story online and you are the 30 minutes after you're still online, your post will reach more people. <laughs> so uh, social media does everything to uh, keep you as long as possible um, on the platform. Uh, and also when you uh, react on stories of your followers, when you um, uh, like and be interactive on the platform, your own content will be more visible as well. Um, so they are really made for um, yeah, use as much as possible, but I can imagine that you really want to focus on your work and to focus on the art you make and not only be uh, um, uh, active with social media all day. So that's why a content planner is really necessary. Uh, just plan um, a couple of moments a day or a week uh, for uh, the content and then um, the rest of the time you don't have to look back at it again. Um, by using the hashtags and by using the tools it will be easier for you uh, and you will see results uh, because I also can imagine when you do put a lot of time at work and energy in it and you don't get the results it's really frustrating <laughs> to to be uh, uh, so active with it. So with these tools, it really be uh, will get a, a, yeah um, more easy. Uh, and with that in mind, um, it is on the end of the presentation. But I want to already tell you the first new post you uh, um, put online, and when it's when it is interesting for a broader audience, um, try to use uh, an uh, advertising budget for just. 20 euros uh, for one or two days. Um, seek if uh, for the right audience. So, for who is this interesting? Uh, why do you want to reach them? What is the story about it? So, um, why should they click on your post? Um, really try to uh, be in the mind of the reader. Um, and then put an advertising budget, so really small, just 20 euros for a couple of days uh, for the target audience you want to reach uh, and see what it does. Um, you even can try to use two separate videos, photos or text to find out which one will be, um, will be uh, received better. Um, for, for in the future and it's all and then you can when you see after one day the one will be uh, the first one is better than the other then you put out the second one and you only go through with the first one um, but it's always good to test your um, content with your followers did we have um, this is actually a summary uh, of we what we have spoken until now the seven steps you always have to keep in mind First, what do you want to reach? If you don't know what you want to reach, how, how will you be? And then it's a, like an, an a spelt in the hoiberg <laughs> to, to, to be uh, uh, in, in line with your content and to get a hold of it. Um, so it's always important to first think, what do you want to reach with your social media? Um, do you want to get new leads? Do you want to get more brand awareness? Do you want to be an uh, expert in the market? This all is relevant for the type of posts you are planning to do. Um, make it personal. So why, um, what is it about the post that is from you? How can I recognize it's uh, Wietse's post and not Johannes' post? What is the difference in, um, in it? And that's, and uh, try to use it every time you post it. It can be in a language, it can be in a kind of pictures. Um, see what's, what's, what, what fits you the best. Um, then, target audience, a big, big important one. Um, as you see here, um, WhatsApp is the biggest one, but also the most difficult one. Um, there is 
um, for, for services, it will be interesting. But after Facebook is still the biggest platform, but as I, I told you already, um, you have to look out for it uh, if your own target group is less active at Facebook. Uh, I don't advise to use it that much, uh, but it still is really relevant for the, um, the baby boomers and the elderly because they uh, even are more active on it than in the couple, last couple of years. So the, the, elder, the elderly your, your target audience is, the better Facebook will work for you. Um, for Instagram, it's the most popular um, platform for the millennials and the uh, generation X. So it's people from 18 to 40. Um, and when you're focusing on kids and uh, youth, you best can uh, be active on TikTok. But I'm not, I don't think any of you um have that one as an audience and uh, then the difference between uh linkedin and instagram um i am a big fan of linkedin maybe it sounds a bit weird for for the cultural section because you have so many um visual um stories to tell so instagram is a good one for that platform that one for your customers and for your uh, the broader audience, but LinkedIn is a platform where uh, many um, business to business uh, relatives are, and it's also a good platform for your uh, business opportunities. So um, do keep in mind that LinkedIn is a really easy way to make new connections, um, just as I told before with the journalists via the, the personal message but also there are so many groups um, that are really active uh, in LinkedIn um, so it's just the same as Instagram look up uh, in the search uh, button um, try to see uh, the relevant hashtags uh, and via the hashtag you can find uh, groups and uh, people that are interested for you. Um, on LinkedIn, best you can post stories like the articles that, that are written about you, um, new opportunities you get. So it's less lifestyle uh, and more uh, about seeking new network and collaborations. Um, but it is really relevant for, uh, for your visibility. Uh, as an artist and um, for seeking new um, new opportunities. Um, then how do you get to the content? Um, I already told about the magazines that all, even um, daily newspapers have a, a content uh, pillar as well because every day they need to uh, look for new content uh, for, for, for their uh, magazine or for their new newspaper. Um, see, it, see your own channels as a newspaper as well. Make it easy for yourself and think of um, days that you will place um, a content. So if there is Monday, you can, every Monday you can place uh, a new song or an old song. Um, use Wednesdays for uh, inspiration from, from other artists. Uh, use Friday for an inter interaction um, via your um, social media stories by um, introducing a quiz or uh, an intro a tutorial or a funny, a funny video of your, your behind the scenes work. When you're using these uh, days, you can plan um, before so when you know every Wednesday there will be a behind the scenes you already think during your work from, oh I have a I can make a picture or I can make a little video uh, right now and post it in a week or two uh, so that will make it easy for you to um, be in line and be active uh, on your channels without 
um, panicking every time you think, oh God, I need to post already. What do I have to, to place right now? Um, I see uh, many visual artists that they um, use old collections um, again for, for the relevance now. So when you think of Black Lives Matter um, or the social distancing, think about a previous experience of you and your artwork that can um, that can be relative for for this subject or for and in that way you can tell your story about the relevance now. Um, please say if anything sounds weird or you think well that's easy but how? <laughs> um, let me know. Um, yeah, I think uh, time-wise we have a uh, uh, time for a last. Uh, um slide and then we can uh go if there are still any specific questions that people would like to address and then uh, yeah. yeah that's perfect because this is the last slide um, yeah, right. <laughs> um at the end the content calendar as i told uh, i'm really a big fan of hootsuite because uh in the planning tool you can also plan for three different platforms without paying uh, as I'm correct, and it also is a um, uh, monitors the the posts. Uh, Buffer is another one. Um, at Trello, you can also have uh, different persons you you can um, give tasks. Um, and later um, is more. Uh, I'm a big fan of it for Instagram. So you can, if you are, if you want to make. Um, a feed with the same style and the same feeling. Um, later is a good platform when you can use a filter uh, for all your all your work or um, and plan your your stories as well. So when you only use Instagram, um, tools like Later are a good one. Uh, and TweetDeck is something if you are using um, Twitter. Um, but it's only used for Twitter. So that was it for the tools. And uh, I can imagine there's still some, uh, my, I have made a little note for the final, uh, my, the, the message I want to give to you. Um, the most important thing I see every time is, please be um, sure you, you, want, you know the story you want to tell. Um, so make it clear who you are, uh, what are you standing for, uh, why are you doing it. That's always the base of everything you do. If you want to get in contact with a journalist, if you want to um, tell others, if you post anything online, this is the basis of everything, your own story. What is it and what makes you unique? Um, then um focus on the platforms that will um be most fitted for you so yes if you have a target audience between 30 and 40 and you think oh my god instagram it's a pain in the ass yes please try and uh <laughs> and make make it work but when you have a, a facebook account um and an Instagram account and you see that you really don't get anything on Facebook, accept it and, uh, um, and only focus on, on the platform you want to um, put energy in. Because that's, if you don't get anything with it, and then you will not receive it back. Um, be visible. Um, and with that, I mean, be con continuously uh, with your content, but also um, try to have the basics in order. So if it's on your Instagram, if it's on your Facebook page, uh, but please also on your website. Um, if you tell me a beautiful story and I will Google you, I must uh, find uh, your, at least your contact details, your story. 
um, and the, the project you're talking about. Because when a journalist hear your story and they can find you online, it's just such a waste um, of all your energy uh, put in. So um, I think there's one of you, I'm sorry, I don't have the name with me, who was telling about doing lots of uh, documentary work, but um, really want to focus more on um, a more abstract phot photography, uh, personal approach about um, with, um, with the theme on um, the, the, the woman's body. And I was really interested in, and then I Googled it and uh, looked for on the website, but I'd see, I didn't see any, any information about it. And that's such a, sh a shame because uh, in that way, I really interested in the, in, the, in the inputs and in the content, but when I can find it online, um, I'm already gone and looking for new opportunities. So the basics are really important um, before uh, going through and, and seeing for new opportunities and new audiences. Um, always think about, so that's my biggest um, message, always think about what information other people need from you. Um, which basics are there? Um, yeah, what's the, the basic information you, you really want others to, to have? Um, yeah, that was it. Okay. All right, then I think uh, we can uh, conclude this session for today. Uh, thank you very much everyone for participating and a very big thanks uh, for Zoe for preparing uh, this presentation and for uh, sharing your experience and your knowledge. Um, you will be receiving the PowerPoint soon and when you have any questions or comments or anything, you can always email it back to us. Yes? Thank you Thank very you. much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Doo -doo. <laughs> <laughs>